Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, Arlen. How are you? I know you are busy. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> I am. I am. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a whirlwind for the next few months. And I'm I'm documenting, actually. I started documenting it last mm -hmm. week while on the road. So we'll have some, you'll have some upcoming uh, footage of what I work on. And it'll be actually on the same ch YouTube channel as this will be. Oh, cool, cool. I, I tell you, I love getting those LinkedIn posts from every day. There's some exciting new announcement of the speaker. I mean, that 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 lineup is pure fire. <laughs> Thank you. That's your first million live, April 9th to the 12th, 2024. We just started making the announcements in December. And uh, I mean, I have been like sitting on some of these announcements since summer. So wow. I've just been like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to tell people that TLC are going to be in the building. <laughs> Like, you had me at TLC. <laughs> it had me. It had me. I was like, where's my ticket? Like, let me <laughs> because it's just it's so cool. I think they have something like including T Boz and uh um Chili. I think they have like eighteen people on stage. Ah, oh, that's gonna be something not it's, to be missed. <laughs> it's incredible. All right. Well, I am so happy that we're having this conversation. Um, I got to meet you, I, I think in person for the first time at the information, uh, WTF summit. That's right. A few weeks ago in Napa Valley and your panel was so cool. And everything you said, like every time you said something and answered, I wanted to jump up and drop mics, but I was trying <laughs> to be co a little cool about it. Cause I, I was like, let me not make a scene. But I was like, are y'all hearing this? <laughs> so I, yeah. really wanted, I really wanted to uh, kind of understand um, uh, what what you do. Like, I wanted to tell people about what you have done. And also, is that your book behind you? I can't. I can't it is it. my book behind me. Yes. Can you grab it or can you grab a yes, copy? Yes, I sure can. I sure can. Yes. What's the name of the book? That's new? It is Quantum Progression, the Art and Science of Career Advancement in the Age of AI. <laughs> wow. So you understand like so many people, I hope y'all are listening to this. We're talking about career advancement, which so many people already want to talk about because yeah. who doesn't want to advance in their career? And then in the age of AI, coming from a seasoned Black woman, from, you know, we I had Sam Altman on here a few months ago, and I've had other people talking about AI, but coming from you, I think it's just going to be incredible. So when, does, when did or does the book come out? So the book is out. The book is out now, and it is on Amazon, and it is on Barnes & Noble, Walmart, everywhere globally where online retailers are, you know sell books. I have seen it on sites in France, sites in Germany, sites in Japan. So it is literally available globally right now. I'm it is a hardcover, paperback, and e-version. Okay, you. I'm ordering it right now. That's what I'm doing on my phone, not trying to be rude, but I'm ordering it right now. <laughs> Love it, go. I'm going to get the hardcover. Oh, it's in paperback and hardcover? It is, it wow. is. And, and yeah. e-version. And I will say that that AI, that, that photo is 100% AI. Uh, done by my son. He's a computer science major at Houston Tillotson. That is 100% AI art. Okay, I want to talk to. I just I pre-ordered right now. Hold on, let me see if it shows anything pr pr uh, private. Yeah, it does have my address, so I won't show. But I just pre-ordered the hard copy. That's what Thank I want you. all y'all to do right now. I didn't pre-order. I ordered, so it's going to yes. be on Thursday. <laughs> yes. So listen, I want to talk about AI. I yeah. want to talk about the theme of your book. Bef but before we do, I have to let the people know your background. So can you, yes. can you talk a little bit about maybe the two or three uh, companies, like first just list them, the two or three companies you have worked with? Yes. Okay. So I will start with some of the bigger names, uh, you know, Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, which is the largest hotel franchiser in the world with over you know, 8,000 properties. I was a vice president of compliance for that company. Um, my other <laughs> big namer uh, is Tesla. I was a vice president of people uh, for Tesla. I was at Tesla for four years. Uh, and now I'm with Handshake, which a lot of you may not know unless you have someone in college, but Handshake is the number one platform where college students find their first job. 18 million students, 850,000 employers, and 2,000 colleges and universities. So 
I, I got I got a you know a pretty good background, I must say, but you know, people always want to hear the Tesla origin story. Oh, we're gonna talk about <laughs> Tesla. Tesla. We're gonna talk about it. Cause I don't know if you know this. I'm not gonna put you on the spot, but I am gonna tell you the truth. I have my aversions to Elon Musk. And so I am deeply curious. And again, you can say what yeah. you want to yeah. or to you like to pass, but can you just tell me from your perspective, like first of all, which years you worked there? Absolutely. From your perspective, what you think of Elon? Absolutely. So it is very important the years I was there from 2018 to 2022. Hmm. And when I joined the company, I was hired to be their head of compliance. So I was on the legal team. You know, we talk of you hear a lot about the the Shanghai Gigafactory. I did all the legal compliance to get that factory built. So from dirt to uh, ribbon cutting, all that compliance I did as a sort of one person compliance team. In my capacity for those first two years, um, I also became the head of Black at Tesla. Black at Tesla, I was, became the executive sponsor. And in that capacity, I started to hear some things that Tesla could be doing better, um, for sure. And I started to become very vocal at the company. You know, whenever we had um, ERG meetings and HR sessions, I talked about what we should be doing better. And one day I got a text and it said, Elon wants to see you. And I thought I was going to be fired. Um, I had never like had a real conversation with him. I was on like one call with him in the first two years that I was there. Uh, several email, but nothing major. And I went to see him and he said, I heard you um, think we should be, there are things we could be doing better at Tesla for um, our employees. And I said, yes. He said, what do you think we should do? Now, this was December 2019. Mm. So I had been prepared with a list and I read to him all the things that I thought that we should be doing for employees. And he said, yeah, okay, so you're going to lead people at Tesla. Now, in my mind, I thought, no, I don't want that job. <laughs> oh, wait, so, so so you're you're in compliance. Head of compliance. You have a meeting that's just texted to you. You have this meeting. You say, yes. you're going to be fired. But then he says, you say a list. And yeah, then he, this is what we should be doing. These are my kind of, suggestions for whoever is going to lead this function. And so That was my non, intent. Kind of nonchalantly, he says, okay, so you're leading people. Yes, yes, of yes. All Tesla, not just black people, but all, all <laughs> not just not just black people, all people. And I, I will say nothing he ever does is nonchalant. And so, you know, in that moment, and I talked about this at the information, you know, when you speak up, you got to be ready to take the wheel. You know, if you're going to speak up um, and someone says, well, you do it. I had two choices, right? I could either say no and leave it to someone else who might, you know, do the things that I thought we should be doing or step up. And so now that's December, 2019, mm -hmm. two weeks after I got that designation, I get an email from the head of environmental health and safety. And she says, I need you on the COVID-19 task force. And I said, what do you mean? You know, it's in Shanghai, we have it contained. She says, no, it's coming here. And I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, Valerie. So I was literally on the coronavirus task force maybe two weeks after that. And so in the midst of working on that game plan, I was also working to keep employees safe. Um, so I was there until 2022 and we got so much done for employees, you know, increased hourly rates, increased equity, increased employer relations, um, partners to handle, um, issues, increased health and wellness benefits, increased mental health benefits. It's all in the, um, in our Tesla impact, uh, their Tesla impact report, which nobody reads so much got done in those two years. Yeah. And then when we were moving to Texas, I thought, you know, <laughs> maybe my maybe this is time to uh mm -hmm. maybe my effectiveness may not be as effective uh mm -hmm. when the company moves to Tesla and that's when I started thinking about moving and that's how I found handshake and that's why I made the move so you you didn't get this far by burning bridges so I know I'm not going to get you to say that Elon has done anything shady but I really do as much as you can say what is your opinion like how do you for, well how did you feel he handled the work that you did, like even if you didn't get all the so so, let me give you a perfect example. Let me give you a perfect because I will say this: what you see on Twitter is not what I saw day to day. Mm. So I literally have a meeting and like got what I wanted and ready to go, and I would walk out the door, and then my phone would start blowing up. <laughs> I mean, did you see what he just said? And I, I'm like, I was, I was, just I was there. just in there. 
So, so what I can say is in, in my moments, like when we talked about the things that I felt like there was um, an anti-handbook handbook. Tesla was notorious for that. It's 2020, an anti-handbook handbook for a global company. You know, I got that taken down and we had a comprehensive employee. So those are the, the, the you know, the things I went to the CEO for to get done. Yeah. And I was getting stuff done. But there were moments when I'd walk out and the, the, the world would blow up at night. So now I'm dealing with something that just happened where literally I had this great meeting. So I I don't know who that person was on Twitter. I, I will say, I don't know who that was. Can I say, I I feel that because I just tweeted or X or whatever I did. I, I left Twitter for about seven months because I just, I, he had turned it into a cesspool, whatever, whatever version of him it was. But I, I just recently in the last two weeks said this on there that watching him in a long form video is completely different than his tweets. Like, like I'm going to say this for the first time out loud and I'm going to, it's going to hurt coming out. <laughs> when I watch him in long form video, I actually enjoy what most of what he has to say and find and understand some of not all of the hype some of it I still don't think he's the genius that everybody thinks he is or mm -hmm. you know the second coming but I do understand how he's interesting and he has interesting nuanced thoughts about things but then he gets on Twitter and says pull my finger I don't and know he says pull my finger me. comma uh ad racial racial you know undertones Never met that person. Never met that person. And and to your point, that long form, when you watch those two hour sessions and you hear that sober discourse. Yeah. Um, and then you tell me, you know, compare that to what got tweeted or yeah. whatever you posted, you know, five minutes ago. So I will say the person I saw, you did you see Saturday Night Live? Like yeah. that that's the 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 that gregarious person yeah and the person you see on some of these really great interviews when i was in my one-on-ones or when i was in a leadership meeting that's the person that i saw and i tell people do you really think a 100,000 employee company can be run by the person that's tweeting that is not the person that's in those meetings i will tell you that yeah I'm you know what so every once in a while i think it's maybe a brewster's million situation you remember that richard Pryor movie <laughs> I literally just like every somebody. once in a while, I think he, at when he got Twitter, somebody said to him, Jack or someone said, you have to run it into the ground, no matter what way. And then you'll get the amount, you know, for real, because there's no other, <laughs> there's no other explanation. And I will say this, like he has, there are some racial things he has said prior that, you know, is not in this new version of his, but anyway, I, I don't want to spend the whole time talking about yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. This is your interview but I thank you for sharing that because that does sure. help me a little bit and and I I continue to uh contain multitudes so I'm going to have different opinions about things as I get new data as you must because you will you will have a thousand opinions you yep. will, on one person yeah. that is absolutely yeah. true so with all of that background and I guess I mean that how did that feel that that at Tesla, at when at, you said, tell me the name again. At the oh, Wind it was Wind Wind Hotel. Wind 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 Hotel. Yeah, and I was a focus brand. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How does that type of responsibility feel in that role? So I, I think the most important thing when you're when and I talked about this at the information. You know, when you're responsible for you know the the lives of it. So it was fifty thousand when I joined, a hundred thousand when I left at Tesla. The the, the idiosyncrasies of how you're reporting to the CEO pale in comparison to, are we increasing wages? Like mm. pale in comparison to, are we increasing health benefits? Pale in comparison to equity, equity for people who build the cars. I mean, so getting that stuff done outweighed the stress okay. of a 3 a.m. text <laughs> about whether or not I won't even say, I won't, anyway, yeah, um, it, 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 it outweighed for a considerable amount of time, it outweighed the stress because we were doing so. And I would, man, I would walk through the factory and I'd be in the elevator and, you know, the workers would come up to me and say, thank you so much. And you know, one, one person said, you know, you are our voice. So those kind of moments 
um, I really was doing work I was called to do there. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it in, and when you have the capacity to do that, if not you, then who? Mm-hmm. And, and it does not come without slings and arrows, but I knew I was getting stuff done. And like I said, is it, you know, look at my LinkedIn. I have, I have, a, I enumerate everything that I led and got done while we were there. And I'm still, I'm so proud. I'm so proud, but you have to know, you know, and I talk about this when you're a leader, you have to know when you're, you're, you're it's time to, to move on. And I, I knew when it was time to move on. Say your full name for anybody who's listening to the audio version of this and not watching the video. Valerie Capers Workman. And the name of the book is? Quantum Progression, The Art and Science of Career Advancement in the Age of AI. Why did you decide to write this book? You know, I, I, I worked in, you know, two companies where generative AI, particularly, you know, at Tesla, it's, you know, sort of the becoming the, the, the lifeblood of the, the, the back office of work. And I just started to sense a lot of panic. You know, people were the fear of AI taking over jobs. And I started to, you know, think that someone has to bring a, a sobering point of view to this discourse because, yes, generative AI is going to impact every role. But if you see it coming, you know, you, you get ready and then you stay ready. And I thought, no one's talking about it from a career perspective. Like, how do I plan for the next 10 years of my career? And I thought, I'm going to write that book. And mm. I know I'm the first one. Um, of any gender or any color who has talked about how do you progress in your career in the age of AI? And I cover everything from AI ethics. Yes, I do. AI bias. Yes, I do. I talk about things like imposter syndrome. Yes, I do. But I also talk about, you know, what are the tech um, AI uh, tools that you're going to need to learn? Um, How do you navigate your career? Get comfortable with you know, every two years making a move is a good thing. You know, I, I did that, you know, when I started my career 20 years ago, people call me flighty. You know, people are Valerie's directionless and what yeah, is she yeah. doing with herself? And it was all a rhyme and reason. And now I am teaching people, this is how you stay current by you, you do your two years, do your two and a half years, three years, and you move on. So there are all these tools and techniques that if you learn, you will be impervious to the changes of AI and you'll be prepared. And I talk about the value of being superhuman and the things that only humans can still do. Uh, so I, my book is a handbook of, of, of how to manage a career, whether you're in college or whether you're a senior executive. Uh, and I'm so proud of it. So proud of it. You know, while you were speaking, something dawned on me. And it, it to me, is so interesting that I'm going to announce something that I haven't said publicly in order to see if we can make it happen. And you may not want it to happen, so you have to tell me. Okay. What I'm going to announce right now, and I'm sure we'll cut this into a little blurb, my team will, (laughs) is that um, it's probably going to surprise a few people. I am one of the very few people who's invested in this round of open AI. (gasps) And... um, I've known Sam Altman for several years and, and I went through the whole process and wow. of course, when everything happened just recently, it was mm. right in the middle of everything. So interesting. Things we can talk about things I couldn't say at the time, of course, but I am. And when I, when it was happening, I gave my support to Sam, but also I said, this is an opportunity for you all because of this board. And I have very, I'm the smallest one, you know, financially wise there, but I uh-huh. have, have very little pool. But I will say this, because I know the audience watching has pool. Hmm. I believe you should be on their board. Oh, I do too. <laughs> so I do too. That is Without my question. That's why I'm announcing this because I did tell them and I said it, and you know, I publicly talked about how silly this was and everything. And I meant every word of it, but I privately said to Sam and to others on the team, you must do better on your board now that you have this opportunity to. Wow. So I am going to send, I'm going to play this lot. I mean, play this publicly. And then I'll also send it to them directly. And if they have a problem with it, they can bring it up with me. Um, Because I don't know if I'm allowed to say I'm an investor or not, but I'm doing it. So you of all people, need to be on that board. Can wow. you can you speak to what, you know, your book is about 
making sure that you don't get sort of left out of AI and because yeah. I've been saying this too, like don't get so scared of it that you get left behind. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But I wasn't afraid to also have a whole, you know, preface chapter on, you know, AI ethics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I actually wrote for any of those of you who are reading this book, who are responsible for AI, here's what you need to be doing. So, you know, someone told me, you know, your book reads like it's written for the Instagram generation. I'm like, well, that, thank you. You know, thank you very much. Because there was a lot to cover in that book. Yeah. But, you know, no, number one, I use uh, generative AI all the time and I am a better executive for it. There is no question about okay. it. My CEO, my CEO asked me for something the other, the other week. And I won't go into too much detail, but, you know, I'm a lawyer, HR, and he asked for like a process. And I'm like, lawyers don't write process docs. But I'm like, give me 15 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes later, I got it. And I look like a superstar. So, and I have also told my team, do not bring me any work product that you have not run through some form of generative AI first so that I'm looking at your best work. So mm -hmm. I am a fan. But I also know that when my son was contracted by me to do the cover art for my, for my book, he struggled to find a, a group of employees that were that were non-Caucasian representative, and he put in prompt after prompt. He's a computer science major. It took two hours to get that pitch, and I thought the algorithms are messed up. <laughs> the algorithms are so so. Someone has to be paying attention to who's putting in the data, and quite frankly, some of those, the the some of the images that came up, you could tell there were. Um, very non-serious um, individuals who are creating those algorithms and intended for some of those ge those um, images to be generated to have a comic or supposedly yeah. humorous point of view. Yeah. So, someone, so needs to care, someone needs to care about those things, but it has to be a fan. So I'm not afraid of it. I'm a huge fan, but AI ethics have to be baked into it's who we're hiring who, for the data, for the analysts, for the algorithms. All of that matters. And I've led the hiring of 50,000 people. So I know what I'm talking. I know how to do it. Um, I know what to look for. Say and we again. have not <laughs> said, I know how to do no, that. No, no, no. How I, many people you did what? 50,000. When I joined, when I led Tesla, there were 50,000 employees. And when I left, there were 100,000. So oh. I helped lead the hiring of 50,000 folks. And I'm talking hourly workers, cafeteria workers, cafe workers, to software engineers, to the best engineering talent in the world. So I know how to do that. Um, I've been a practitioner of generative AI from the beginning. And I also, I mean, I'm a compliance expert. So governance, I've been doing compliance for over 20 years. I know governance, I know corporate compliance, I know SEC compliance. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I was made for that type of role, but I said, it has to be a fan because it can't be someone who's afraid of. And I saw all that um, drama playing out too. And I had some thoughts about what it may be just for my armchair quarterback analysis. And, you know, so most companies, when they fail, it's a failure of compliance. I mean, when they truly, truly break down. And so someone I think needs to have that business focus, needs to have the AI focus, needs to have the governance focus. You and I have not spoken about this at all, but let me tell you, when I saw that, I thought, when am I getting the call? Yeah, <laughs> so oh, I would imagine, I mean, you're sitting there and you see, and there's all the 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 drama, drama, the yeah. silliness. But there's at the core of it, it's very serious business because yeah. oh my goodness, who's watching the store? Yeah. Oh, this is too important for all this silliness. Uh, and by the way, they say women are dramatic. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, and so you're you're there. So I I absolutely will do what I can just publicly here to 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 say that that needs to be the case because they need, they need, I mean, they don't deserve you if I'm being honest, but they need you. Wow. Yeah. I, so yeah. who is the type of person who should be picking up this book? Is it someone who's already working, somebody looking for work? Like, Yeah. And it's, it's, it's written so that depending on what stage of your career you're at, there's a chapter for you. So there's a chapter on managing your personal brand. And I talk about how I had to manage my brand in the shadow of Elon Musk. <laughs> and so if you're at a stage in your career where you are understanding how important your brand is, then that's a chapter you're going to pick up. There's a chapter on um, how to game the interview process. I, I talk about game theory 
as a foundation for interviews. So if you're getting ready to go for that next big gig, doesn't matter if it's your first job or your C-level job, there's a chapter on that for you. If you're wrestling with imposter syndrome, there's a chapter, and I, I, I will not get into a debate anymore if people say it does not exist. It does exist because I had it, so you can't tell me I didn't have it because I did. Um, there's a chapter on that for you. There's a chapter on what are the types of AI generative you know, forms and what are the types of tech um, uh, education that you can supplement if you've got that bachelor's degree and you're 10 years in and you think you're too far gone, go to a boot camp. So depending on where you are in your career, there's a chapter for you. It doesn't have to be read sequentially, but it's a handbook you're going to need for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Is there a, uh, like, have you found that having a small group of peers who can relate to you and who can open doors for you has been helpful in your career or... You know what's interesting, and this is now this is going to be a topic that I think um, would, would probably require its own one hour. And I'm going to say something controversial, but I may not look it, but I am a woman of a certain age. I will say that as I came up, it has been a white male who has championed me to get to my next level. Okay, talk about but, it. But, you know, because when I was coming up, those were the only people who were in the senior executive mm -hmm. roles. Mm -hmm. And every woman I spoke to who was at, you know, my stage um, of maturity um, has the same example. But for me, now that I am in the seat, it is such a pleasure to be able to, you know, help, you know, particularly women of color to get through the, the hurdles, you know, and make their hurdle, their barriers lower. Um, and easier because I've been through that. So it depends on, you know, you're talking about me coming up or you're talking about me now, but yes, there have been in, in, in every job I've had, I've had a champion and that champion has, has been a white male. But for me, I want to women of color to see me as their champion and as my favorite, favorite thing to do. Favorite thing. To Interesting do. because, you know, a lot of white men watch your first million and listen to your first million. And I talk to them all the time. And so what you're saying is be that ally as well, like be that champion be that ally. because you're remembered and you're, it's a, it's a special place to be. So you already have the privilege and we, as we've talked about over the years, privilege is not a bad word. Entitlement is. So you have the privilege and how much higher quality of life and just in general uh, fun would it be to just help someone with your privilege because you have the privilege for a reason it's not something that you created you know yeah. it's just an imbalance like I was thinking I was thinking about someone who was talking to me about um how how uh, for lack of a better word how poor HBCU endowments are hmm. and they compared it to like Yale and Harvard and I was like I mean, they weren't making fun of it. They were upset too, but I was, it was a white man. And I was like, the reason Yale and Harvard and all these colleges can have that much money is because the foundation was built on the backs of slaves. And we built, like black people built the country for them to have. And of course, when you step on the our backs, we're going to go lower and have to start from a different position, right? And if, then if year after year and decade after decade and century after century, anything that we build is then burned to the ground, figuratively or literally, then of course we're going to be behind. And we're going to be behind. But, is, but isn't it, but isn't it, isn't it amazing how, but we get back up and we, we start over again and we, and we, and we build it again. So I, so, so I will say to that, you know, to, to your point, it's so easy to make a difference. Like it is so, you, you you cannot complain that there's nothing that you can do. It is so easy. And I will say that every champion that I have had, it has not been based on altruism. These are men that I reported to who I made look good because I was so excellent and they recognized the excellence in me, but they did not try to claim my excellence. They allowed me to shine. And therefore, my career progressed. Now, it wasn't everybody. <laughs> and I had I have my issues. I have my issues. So I'll say, you know, if you it's so cliche, but if you want to make a change, just be the change. When you see excellent, call it out. Be that person that speaks up for that woman when she's not in the room. Those things are so simple and everybody wins. Mm -hmm. everybody and they're wins. also, they're sexy too. Like somebody's looking at you as a guy speaking up for a woman 
or someone who's underestimated, underrepresented, and someone they're not going to say because HR is in the room, but they're thinking, mm, okay, you married? You married? <laughs> I'm not Harlan, you're not getting me on that one. <laughs> I mean, when I see like, I'm not touching who is just being so confident in themselves by putting someone else on blast, like in a good way, in a shine, mm -hmm. giving someone else a shine. I'm like, that's an attractive quality to me. It's I see. Okay. Quality, okay. Right. Okay. It's like, okay. yeah, it is a, and I say sexy because when we, we talk about companies, like a, a company can be sexy, right? I just mean that it is you don't need to be afraid to be that person because you're actually going to be seen in a better light by most people. You don't yeah, and it, you're you're seen in a better light. You're seen as a better leader. Um, you're seen as, quite frankly, you know, the 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 safer bet, the safer leader, the 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 wiser leader. It it is a good look all the way around, and it and it has benefits. I have in turn helped those same males who have helped me come up. Now that I'm on this side, oh, I have, you know, reached back and, you know, given references and given recommendations because, you know, you, you pay it forward. And so it will come back to you. It will come back. There, there is no lose to supporting someone who's excellent. You look good in the moment and you have great connections forever. And when you say pay it forward, what I thought of is you pay it forward, but it's full circle. So even though you're going forward, you're going around and that's why you see people the same people you on the way back you will see the same people yeah. on the way back and isn't it a good feeling to know you did them good yeah. <laughs> whatever direction you saw them coming in yep. and then you know the event we were at there were or my mom would kill me for that preposition but it's okay um <laughs> where we were <laughs> where we were um the, it was a, a few hundred women and um uh, you know mostly high profile positions yeah. and you mentioned that yes there have been these champions of yours many of them have been white men or men in general but you said you also like to put groups together how does that yeah. play out and how does that kind of work with your like is your book meant to be a mentorship in a box it is it is because I get so many questions people stop me all the time and say how did you do this how did you go from you know being seen to be flighty to you know leading HR one of the biggest companies mm -hmm. in the world like I don't have time to have that conversation but here's my book I promise you if you read it everything I know you're going to know so it is my career coaching in a book I hand it to you and I say you, you, you read it everything I know you will know, I promise you, on how to how to up level your career. Love that. Is your book available as audio? Not yet, not yet. I'm waiting for the the the, the uh, New York Times bestseller list, with I which I am claiming I'm going to be on, hey. and then I will, I will get somebody phenomenal <laughs> to, to oh, read. Oh, you have to do it. You should do it. Your voice you know, is great. I don't know. I don't know. It'll t it'll take maybe two or three days. Okay. It is a slog, but it's worth it. But it, even if you don't write, read the introduction. Mm. read the introduction have somebody else read the rest of it okay we hear from you when we do that and if you want to do it independently there's you just go to a studio and do it like I think I would love I, I would personally love that and I know a lot of people would discover you that way hmm. I, th I, I will take you up on that and there's another point too when you talk about um you know how do I coach people I've gotten so much feedback from particularly women that I've mentored over the years who re review the books and say, this is exactly what you told me. This is exactly what you said. I'm so glad that people can see when I said Valerie was this or Valerie was that, this is what I meant. And that has been so gratifying. I mean, I, I coach men and women, so but I just have a particular source part in my heart for the women who say, you know, thank you for, you know, being in the moment. I'm glad so many people get to hear from you because I had you, you know, when, when you were a leader. So it's, yeah. it's, it's been very gratifying to see those reviews. That's great. And so um, everybody here who's watching and listening, you've already gone to grab the book online. Or you're going to go into a bookstore or go to the library. You're going to figure it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there anything that you want to make sure people have a takeaway from this conversation? Yeah, I think the most important thing is, um, Remember that there are women and people of color who are experts in AI and that we should be part of those, that conversation. We have been with it from the beginning. We have great things to offer. And, you know, this may be controversial too, but I like to say controversial things. We, DEI is a wonderful, absolutely necessary perspective, 
But just because we are people of color does not mean that we are all DEI. That is not my expertise. My expertise is AI, legal, governance, hiring, et cetera. So that's my lane. Um, and I, I'm, I'm excellent at it. So be, be open to when you're looking for at, at who should be the voices as AI continues to develop. Um, we need a, we need a wider, we need a, we need a wider bench. I love that. I love that. That's the best way to end this. Thank you so much for your time here. Um, I, I can't wait to get the book. I hope it gets here in the next, I think 48 hours, is what it said. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. Thank you.